Here we go. Three, two, one. Three, two, one, blast off. <laughs> the silent cat. We're live. Be a slack. <laughs> what is up okay we're welcome back to live at loop uh it, by some miracle of technology we have merged all of the different parts of our company virtually uh this coffee is is actually not real <laughs> i can't, can't reach it there's no there's no coffee there this is so disappointing uh but we're here in our virtual space because uh we want to talk about live at loop all right live at loop season two welcome back to season two and it wouldn't be season two without uh, some of your returning favorite characters and some new characters, and we're gonna do it even better than last time. So let's see, let's see if I can do this. I'm so getting used to it. Hello, hello team, hello everyone. Hey. What's up? Hello. All your smiling hello. faces. All right, so up in the upper left, we got Jonathan McLean, new machine concept engineer. Welcome back, Jonathan, from season one. Upper right, we got Josh Polanski. This guy makes hack prototypes like you wouldn't believe. Tune in because this is going to get really, really awesome. That's why he's here. Uh, we've got David Blackburn uh, in the on the left here waving. Hello, David. Our execution lead slash PM slash lead dev slash, you know, we're just, we still argue about the titles every day. Uh, we got Jeff Wester from Kinesis uh, helping us out on the strategy of what we're doing here and how we're talking about people. We got Allison, our stream operator. Welcome back, Allison. Allison will be butting in with any of your comments or questions, any of your interruptions while we're, you know, if you can derail us from our, from our rabbit holes and arguments, uh, feel, please feel free to jump in anytime. So uh, we're going to try to do about 30 minutes today. We're going to, I'm going to brief about what do we did, what do we do to get to this point? What's the purpose of season two? What are we trying to do next? Uh, we'll have a discussion around scoping and then, yeah, we'll be done in 30 minutes, come back next week. If we go a little long, which would be normal for us, uh, you know, apologies in advance. So um, I'm going to go ahead and open up this deck here. Uh, now you guys are off camera. I've just got the PowerPoint. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Live at Loop and what we're doing here. So uh, the reason we're here at Loop is because of revolution. We want to revolutionize automation. Robots and automation are thought of as this very high tech world, but in a lot of cases, actually, things are super conservative. They're there are a ton of new technologies waiting to be put to use, and that's what we're excited about doing. And the purpose of this program and our company and everything like that is to take all those pieces and inspire people to do new things, show them what's 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 possible, show them what our team is capable of. If this is cool to you, we want to talk to you, we're interested in you, uh, let's collaborate. That's, that's why we're doing this. That's why we're trying to put ourselves out there. So uh, I want to give a special shout out to BNR Industrial Automation and ABB Robotics. These are two of our technology partners. We are a distributor for them. We represent them. We sell their products. Uh, so I guess that's a disclosure as well, but we're also really excited. We love this stuff. I've been working with BNR, especially for a long time, 15 years now. Um, if you want to hear the story of the first season, go back and you can look on our website, loop.team slash story slash track dash packer. Uh, I've got the link here and you can see how we took uh, basically a napkin sketch and took that all the way to the point that we're at now, which is we have a machine that we want to try to prototype. We want to start working on the real thing. We've done a lot of work on the concept and now we're going to be working on the software. So that brings me to season two. Season two is about the track packer digital twin. We're going to do our engineering process called ship and six. That's an iterative engineering process, meaning fixed amount of time. We're not exactly sure what we're going to be able to accomplish in that time, but we're going to work on today and also next week. What is the scope? What are we going to be going for in this six week period of time? Uh, and I've got some great engineers here to help us figure that out. And we're going to start talking about it now. So um, let me get you guys up here on the screen and we're going to talk about, I, I, I'm going to bring you guys up to speed. Jonathan, you were here this time. Josh, you might be seeing some of this for the first time. Blackburn, uh, you were clear that you hadn't been briefed up to now. And I said, we'll brief you on camera. So here we, we've reached that moment. Everybody ready to go? Any questions so far? Good, good. I'm getting head nods. People still might be afraid to talk. Is your audio working? <laughs> let's see. You're good. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the track packer. The reason that we were inspired to do the track packer was because we wanted to accommodate a lot of different types of products coming into a machine and producing a lot of different case pack outputs without any changeover in hard tooling. Uh, a lot of machines need physical adjustments by mechanical and levers and all, all these things need to be moved if you're gonna change products. That can take a lot of time. 
Um, but there's a lot of different variety in products that we want to accommodate. We want to be able to make a lot of different products without losing that time. So we came up with a concept for machine called the track packer. It uses an ABB robot in the center of it. It uses transport technology called Acapause Track from BNR Industrial Automation. Really, really cool stuff. Each of those segments where those shuttles can be individually controlled is made up of linear motors. And so we can servo position any of these products exactly where we want them to, to achieve the goal of that machine. Uh, and there's a lot of benefits. Go back and watch the recaps. There's also a 10 minute video where we explain in detail the track packer solution and why we think it's really exciting. Um, we're not a machine builder. It, we don't plan to build this machine. We're just using this as an example to show what's possible with the technology. We think more people would benefit from learning like, okay, there's this really cool shuttle technology. How do you actually use it? What's it for, right? And that's what we're gonna continue to do um, with, this, with this season. So this is a little bit about the control architecture. I'll just go through this really briefly. Basically, it's a bunch of BNR industrial automation controllers. So that's motion control, real-time control, power supplies. Shout out to Nathan, loves those power supplies. We've got an, uh, some servos up on the end effector so that the end effector can change uh, its posture to pick up different product types without needing any kind of change out for tools. And then let's see, big HMI and also the track pieces. So uh, that's just for those, those at home following along. This is kind of what the control architecture would look like for the machine. And here it is. So this is the track packer. This is a beautiful rendering of it. Uh, we can kind of get a look at it. We're excited to start working on it. I guess before I go any further, Josh, Blackburn, Jonathan, anything that you want to know about this? Anything you think is important for the people to know that are watching? Looks good. Looks good. That's succinct. Great work, Jonathan. <laughs> okay, cool. So can you guys make this? Do, do we just end the meeting now? Is it eight minutes in and we're done? Yeah, I <laughs> agree. Good, good idea. I yeah. agree. I concur. Okay, cool. Um, so let's see. Let me go back to people, intro, scoping. So we talked about, or I just talked about who you are, who you all are, what the machine is. What is season two? What are we trying to do now? The purpose of this is to we're going to do our engineering process, our six week sprint process. And at the start of that, there's a lot of discussion and work that goes into lining up what is a good amount of work to try to tackle? What is a good feature set to try to tackle in that amount of time? Uh, we want to be able to learn along the way and, and kind of build this machine uh, in six week steps. What is the first step? And so I wanted to kind of put it out there to you guys. The purpose of this meeting is to have a conversation about what are the main bullet points of this machine and what what do we think we could accomplish to build like basically a virtual model of this machine in around six weeks. We won't be able to build the complete thing, so we gotta be really careful. What's What are the most valuable things that we could do in that sprint? So um, Blackburn, I wanna get your, and this is simple. It's like just open up a notepad, right? Open up a text editor. Let's start. Let's start making some bullet points and shaping up the the scope of it, the scope of this sprint. Um, so Blackburn, could I have you, please, share your scope, and we will just start talking about what do we want to do. Make a digital twin. Six weeks. Okay. I started Looks early. Like we got some we got some black um, text there. Can we can we lighten that up a bit? I can certainly try. I just hit enter. Uh, so um, advanced document it? editing technology. Nope. Okay. Nope. No, that wasn't not the right green. one. There okay. we go. Good. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Every bullet so, point is going to be a surprise. So when I just wave my hands um, and say make a digital twin of that in six weeks, like what? What are you guys hearing? What do you? What do you? What do you want to know about? I wrote down what, what we're kind gonna of... make a digital twin in six weeks. Okay. What's next? Um, I assume you're gonna to want to see something. There's gonna be something on a screen. That, is that it's a demo? There's a demo. It's a demo. I think I think um, a virtual like a like a three D virtual scene. I think of of the of uh, the machine. That's what that's what we want to show people. So yeah, web HMI three D scene. Uh, I think. 
everything kind of mapped to so that when we run the real control software, that's uh, Blackburn put up here, AR component, that's automation runtime. That's the BNR simulator for the controls, which is exactly what would be running on the real machine, but running on your laptop. Um, so yeah, we need that component of running the process of the machine. Um, I assume you're gonna want to um, some robot studio in there, maybe a uh, robot simulation. Yes. Robotic. Yeah, I think that would be cool. Yeah, it'd be really nice to like have a unified scene for the digital twin to have both. Yeah, I think that there should be unified scene is definitely a thing. Um, I think it would be interesting in terms of the back end. Do we run, you know, the BNR virtual controller and the ADB virtual controller side by side, and then have like one view of that? We definitely want to have a holistic scene. Yeah. Um, and so which parts are controlled in the robot virtual controller and then streamed across, you know, whatever that unification is that we're going to do. And I know there's a few different ways to do it. Um, I think I definitely want to have like one scene, you know, where there's a UI of, you know, even just simple start, stop the machine, uh, maybe change product type. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that maybe some things that we can like definitely cut out or postpone to, to make it a little bit leaner would be to not worry about things like the end effector design or the NP design right now. Okay. Um, that's just my opinion. Just, yeah. just to like okay. keep those as cartoons for now and just focus more on the machine. Um, and then also maybe, I don't even know if I care that much about like the product, maybe that is important to see product. Yeah. Controls. I don't know. I think I like it's product is useful to be on there. I mean, I, I feel like if, if you don't have some sort of product that's shown coming in and out, it's, it's a little bit hard to visualize exactly what's happening. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. That'd be nice to have that. I think color and size both. And, and, and again, I mean, as I was, as I was trying to summarize, like, why do anything? It's a lot of product variability, a lot of product variation coming into the machine and a lot of variation coming out. Like, um, obviously what's in the middle of the machine itself is super important to watch how it operates, but showing there are different things coming in and showing, you know, showing a machine changeover happen would be, would be killer, right? Like that's the whole point. Like we can change over the machine in two seconds. So even mm -hmm. if the, so, but I get what you're saying, like, we don't need to detail the end effector in the sense of like exactly mechanically, how are we going to grip the thing? Yeah. Right. Um, but we would, I feel like we would want to show like here, you can see it re, re, you know, changing its pitch or changing, changing the positioning of the fingers and, and that type of, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I think animating that aspect would be really cool. Changing case sizes, uh, would, you know, we don't need to show boxes maybe, but even if you're showing just like, here's the, Here's the product going down as if there were a box there. Um, that would be cool. Um, you might be able to, to animate a box. Just show boxes. Box. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to add too much. Um, I know that's not not extremely difficult to do, mm -hmm. at least in Robot Studio. But if we're doing a unified scene, that would have to be all done in like 3JS, right? Yeah. Oh, so, I mean, Robot Studio has some of that. 3JS has some. Uh, BNR has Scene Viewer, which may or may not be good for this. Um, I think I, I think one of the important things that we should talk about, though, is like who the who the target audience for using this is. Is this something that mostly people at Loop are going to be driving, or is this something that we'd like to be able to zip up and send to someone that they can run on their own laptops? Um, because that, because there are certain tools that you need licenses for, um, mm -hmm. so that kind of drives, you know, a little bit of the, the tools that we would be using. What specifically, like, is that a, is that a, because I feel like pack either one could package and deploy. Yeah, I mean, I, I can imagine, you know, with Robot Studio, I don't know that. Um, I would necessarily want someone to have to download the entire robot studio to run the visualization, for example. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, where, you know, if we're using, if we're using web tech, you know, someone downloads, you know, we typically use Electron. Um, mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's open source and free and easy to download the package up um, where robot studio is a bigger download and a little bit higher, higher bar. You know? Yeah. I think if, if we were going to, I think, 
packaging it in a way where people could download it and play with it, anyone, that would be, I, I think that's at this point kind of a nice to have. Mm-hmm. Like we need to have it for our own internal purposes. So that I don't mind if it's a like not that bad, like, or if it's, I don't mind if the audience is like loop or other people at maybe BNR or ABB who would, who would expect to have those tools. But obviously distribution would need to be like, I mean, I'm I'm, maybe I'm even forgetting the right term, but like a pack and go, a, you know, it, it, Kind of like we were packaging AR sims. You don't need you don't you don't need BNR. You don't need Automation Studio to to run the AR sim, right? I I feel like there must be an equivalent in in, in ABB world, even if the installers get it. Yeah, I know. I know there certainly is for virtual controllers. You know, I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure you can just boot up a vir- virtual controller, but not necessarily for Robot Studio. I think for Robot Studio, you like for the actual visualization. I think you may still need the whole install to to run okay. that. We'll leave that as a question mark. I think I think we don't want to have to have people download Robot Studio to do that. And I think there's a benefit figuring out how to do that, not just for this project, for a lot of others too. Mm-hmm. Um, the audience, I think it, it's enough that that loop people would demo it. So people like me, whatever whatever capability I would have, that consider that to be your your threshold, which you know is not the same as the dev team. So um, okay, I. I Going back to one thing you were saying, Jonathan, about the infeed, I agree that the details of the infeed are beyond what we want to tackle now in terms of like exactly how is it going to tip and slide. I mean, maybe maybe sliding and pitching in, you know, just kind of like a, a stream in space of like here's the product laid out, and they kind of move, yeah. they do the lateral move in the in the transition section, but we don't worry about the mechanics of how it's going to get to that, and that's kind of like there's a stream of products coming in, it has a pitch, it gets to a certain point, it slides down the thing. Like that, that I think is enough. Yeah. Um, we That's can come back to the infeed later. Yeah. But, uh, but dr- yeah. Um, Modeling the product, I think is going to be a big piece of scope. Yeah. Into. yeah. Watch yeah. that one. Tell me more, like, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Like how to, like the so how many products, or... you know, th- mm-hmm. how many products we want to model, where we want to model them, how detailed we want that model to be. Right, it's mm-hmm. not something we typically do. We don't typically model product. So yeah, a lot of unknowns there. Yeah, and I, I think from the NMC, we have a we have an idea and, and also from the initial mechanicals, we have an initial a range of product size and it's a cylinder you know, maybe we pick a cylinder of a certain, I, I could see parameterizing cylinder, like the diameter. And maybe we have one height um, because that would, because I, I think showing a, a lot of variability in diameter would be enough of an, an, enough of an illustrative thing and showing the different case size outputs in the sense of that would change the pitch and it would change like how many are in a, in a row. I think that might be enough variability um, and a cylinder modeling the cylinder in the machine and also in the in the 3D view, like in 3GS, I, I feel like that could be manageable and, and, and worthwhile. And maybe it's just like a cylinder with a color and a diameter, fixed height. Yeah, I think the, the word model here is being uh, overloaded. I'm talking about where where is it in space? Uh, if it's on a track shuttle, then that's pretty well defined, but on the in feed and on the out feed, knowing the position kind of like, are, we, are we trying to run like real physics or are you talking about modeling just like where it is in space or what yeah just where it is in space any of those yeah i think, I think where physics it is, in space is too is far worth... you, sorry go ahead you think what is too far i think physics is too far on, agree you know the question of how far does it go um but position on in feed and position on out feed is that a word um, yep, and dur- and and in the end effector, I think uh, I, I see yeah, maybe in the end four sections, sort of like in yeah. feed, space. You're, you're talking about spatial modeling, space and time modeling of of the product. Yeah. I think in feed is distinct. Then there's transition onto track, which I feel like we know what we would do on the track, and then there's like the robot picks it up and moves it around, and then the robot lets it go. And I see like Indeed. there's probably four modes. You know, there's four kinds of modes that it would be in 
transitions. Uh, however, yeah, but yes, I, I meant modeling in the way that you meant, which was where is the product? And let's have a way to show that. I, I don't know where it would be most convenient to model it in terms of in the software, but um, that could be something that just AR keeps track of the whole, you know, the AR sim keeps track of it the whole time. And that, mm -hmm. that way it would just, the scene would just have to, you know, here's the, here's the, here's where it is in space. It, it doesn't, we don't have to worry about modeling that in the, in the HMI side. Yes, I would expect so. Yeah. On the track, on the track as I think is already well-defined because it will be where the shuttle is. Yeah, um, yeah. So we'll need to figure out how to, you know, offset from the known location, which is in defector position and in feed position and so on. But that's something we we can do, right? We have experience with positioning relative to a variable. I right? think so. And kind of locking that's how, that's it in. That's how we as... animate robots, right? Yeah. Yeah, or like changing, you know, in 3JS terms, it would be, you know, where in the hierarchy is it sticking, you know, sticking it on the end effector when when the grip happens and things things like that. That I think changing which yeah, changing. And changing which reference frames it's moving in. I think that I think that's changing parents is changing parents. Something maybe we haven't done. No, we've done some of that. I think I'm very comfortable with that. Okay. Yeah, cool. Uh yeah. So bottles go in, cases go out, all this stuff happens in the middle. I I think, I feel like 3JS is the unified view, right? I mean, do we have any debate about that? The the web HMI side, the, and for those watching, that's building the 3D scene in basically a web page that has 3D graphics built into it. So we use a lot of open source tools for that. We can map the position of everything that's happening in the real-time controller into that scene. Um, and that's how we build a lot of our UIs. Um, the question I guess for you guys is do we, do we want to have that be the unified view or do we want to have robot studio play a role and try to make robot studio be that unified view or, or like some pack and goes thing of that, that, that seems to me like a pretty big scope question. I mean, I think, I think from, I mean, I'm most comfortable in three JS, um, uh -huh. and a little bit in robot studio with that kind of thing. Um, so I would prefer three JS for that reason. Um, okay. but also just back to the, you know, licensing distribution, um, if that is, if that's something that we're considering, um, again, it's going to be just more difficult to to package and uh, distribute something that's in Robot Studio. Yeah, there's a machine centric approach to this where I feel like building all the kinematics and doing all of the motion control, even of the robot in the VNR side, and having that be what we're building on. That that even though we're controlling an ABD robot, like mm -hmm. that would that would decouple yeah. us. That's actually, that. that's actually a good point. I mean, there's, you know, there's no reason we couldn't be running the, the ABU robot virtually in, in AR, as opposed to having robot studio also there. Um, I think if you're, if you're trying to really do some sort of like time studies, um, or get, you know, depending on, depending on how accurate you're trying to get, you know, we would probably be running it for real, uh, from the IRB five or IRC five. Yeah. Uh, so it's just a question of like, well, do, do you want it to be you know, a fully accurate dual digital twin or is it good enough to run it in just AR? Because you know, VNR obviously has robotics capabilities on their own. Um, although you know, right now there's not a direct connection. Uh, well, I'm, I won't say that, but there's, you know, it's more native. It would be more native to run directly on the IRC5. Yeah. And oh. I think for the, the question is for the, to me, the, the decision there would be, is the audience somebody who's want to say, let me, let me crack this open and really look at how it works under the hood. Because if you're just showing it, if you're just showing, here's the machine, you still see an ABV robot doing what an ABV robot does, right? You yeah. don't, that's kind of like, do we care about it being correct behind the curtain? Right. I, I, I think I do prefer it that way. Cause I like pro I, I like the idea that we program in the movies in robot studio. The mm -hmm. tools for that are the robot studio is a tool of like defining the robot motion is yeah. really, really good. I um, agree. And I think, I yeah, think, okay. Um, I think in, I think in general, but that that's part of the question. Like, is, is that the thing, thing we care about? I think there's a lot of technologies to be built around, um, you know, integration between BNR and ABB. 
some of those we've already built um, and this would be a great place to like put them to the test a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. Some, of them, some of them are in the works. So yeah. you know, this is in some sense an opportunity to kind of get, get a sense for how those would work. Um, and you know, if that, if that's a path we want to go, uh, with this, that's great. If not, you know, there's, there's, you know, wherever we draw the line is sort of just part of the discussion. Yeah. Or it's something that we spend a few days, you know, and somebody answer the question of like, go down both paths and see which one seems the most promising. I mean, I have mm -hmm. a preference. I mean, based on just what you said, I think my preference would be, let's, let's try to do a robot studio. Let, let's try to run robot studio. Let's build those interfaces to BNR, and you know, if we want to have a unified view, that's still maybe going to the BNR side, but maybe we get maybe we get the data via EGM, and that's you know, it's it, yeah. it's showing the position of how the virtual controller is showing the robot. Ro virtual virtual controller is still in control of the robot, but we have we have like really high speed information about where the joints are, things like that in the BNR side that we can then use to map into the scene. I feel like that would be fast enough even in a simulator, it, it would be indistinguishable, I, I feel like. So, I mean, that would be my preference, but I wouldn't want, you know, if, if it's faster or, you know, it gets us, you know, we don't have time to, we just got to do it all on the BNR side because we would, that would be quicker Then I think there's a, I could see abandoning that or, or, or going and, and doing that if, if it turns out like some of those interfaces like that we were counting on don't do what they're supposed to do for us right away, right? So. Mm -hmm. I think I think plan B would be like go to go to only automation runtime. And when we build this, we'll go ahead, Blackburn, and then we got a we got a comment from Allison after after you. When we build that, when we build this, we're probably going to want to run the robot from Robot Studio. So agree, yeah, strongly agree. I think that's a better that's a better choice for that reason as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Allison says we got a comment. So what do you got? We do have a comment. We have a vote for uh, 3JS here. Works for demo, standalone application, machine control and demo, vis visualization all in one. And who is that from? Did they reveal their name? They did reveal their name. It's from Carl. It's from Carl. Carl Mr. Dude. Carl. Right? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> he's not, a, yeah, he's not afraid to share his opinion, and neither am I. I, I think. Um, I think the unified view for sure is 3JS. So I, I think that's compatible with Carl's comment. Um, I think what'll be in the back end is there will be an ABV virtual controller uh, doing the path of the robot, controlling the motion of the robot. And then we'll be showing it in the 3JS scene that will be run from the BNR side. So I think that's correct. If not, holler at us again, um, or raise your yeah. hand again. Anybody so hear that differently? I have, I have two concerns with Robot Studio which would be, do we have time to make that work? And also how distributable is it? Does that change any of our distribution questions or is it's fine? It probably does. And somebody should maybe, this is also why I think we allowed a couple weeks, you know, a couple weeks of scoping, uh, which would be maybe somebody needs to go and and do a little bit of research to make that decision before we, before we sign up for one of the other decisions. Um, the interesting thing is we already have some of the paths defined in Robot Studio, but again, as we start to articulate it and make it a lot more complex in the sense of where is it picking from, like it could get more complicated than the Robot Studio programs that we currently have. So I don't know, Jonathan, do you have an opinion on that at all? I see you nodding, but. Well, no, I, yeah, I think we need more research. Um, it would be really awesome if there is just like a, a standalone virtual controller, you know, that we can just deploy with, the rapid code already on there, just in like a standalone executable in the same way we can do with um, with ARSM. But I don't I don't know personally if any of if, if that's possible yet. But that's something you know. Okay. I could check into that or. You know. Yeah, like that would that would be a test. That, that would be some testing that we could do between now and next Tuesday, and then if you could come prepared to talk about what you learned and if if we can distribute that by itself and have that be part of our, you know, our standalone digital twin thing, that would be awesome. If not, then yeah, we know we can do that with the with AR SIM with on the BNR side. So let's get that question answered and then we can commit to that scope. Um, we're at 1030, so I'm, I wanna be uh, cognizant of the time. Um, what other stuff are you guys seeing that you wanna talk about before we wrap today? Nothing. Um, 
Blackburn, I'm seeing questions here. Do you want to clean this up and, you know, or maybe you and me talk or so that we come back and sort of ratify this for next Tuesday and say, okay, here's our, here's our scope. I feel like we've talked about it enough and there's enough that we can make a legit, nicely formatted list out of this. Any, any other points of uncertainty you think we should touch on? No, I think this is good. I think, so we agreed three JS, um, that's pretty well decided for the scene, unified scene in 3G, 3JS. Uh, how much of Robot Studio we are going to use depends a little bit on how hard we think it will be to do and if it's doable uh, and if it's distributable. And if the answer to both of those things are yes, then we prefer Robot Studio for Robot Motion, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And I think the I think the big picture is pretty non-controversial of, of what needs to be done. So I, I think we're good. Okay, cool. And then I think what would be interesting to think about when we go away and come back next week is what are the potential things that we could throw overboard if you know some of these things take longer than we think? Like I could imagine simplifying the infeed model, for example, of like let's not show the shift transition because like although we know how we would do it, we just we want to get a we want to get something clean finished in six weeks. Um, let's think about what could we end up having be optional, or like what would be the lower priority things, or maybe some order um, to it, so that we can be happy with what we have at the end of a sprint. Um, great. I think I covered what we wanted to talk about today. Anybody else got anything before we break? I did have one question. Um, we we've been talking a lot about three JS and the three D scene. Um, does that also include like some sort of like machine control HMI kind of thing? Or is this, is this scene only, is there, is there a machine control HMI component that's different? Is that? I think start, stop, reset, you know, product in, you know, what product is coming in, what case size is going out. Like I think some kind of very, very rudimentary UI, um, would would be needed some buttons and and some selections on what do we what do we what do we want coming in and what do we what do we want to go out and yeah mm -hmm. controlling the machine in the sense of you know and again that that that's actually a good great question because it brings up how are we going to clear out the machine and that's a place where i think we could just might we might be okay to cheat you <laughs> know just be like yeah, boom, sure. like wipe it <laughs> nuke it you know that that would be something that it, it would be really cool to show a transition between products but i think it's also fine to show okay, here's now it's running this product. Now, you know, now it's going to be running this product and, you know, use your imagination for the transition. That, that's a, that's an area of fidelity that I think we could be, we could be optional for now. I think the first step for everything is cheating. Um, <laughs> then we can, then we can go beyond. Yeah. Okay. Well, it won't be cheating until we're putting things in boxes. It'll all be cheating until then. So cool. Um, How much time do we have left on the live feed? We have as much time as we want. It's 1034. Uh, we were shooting for 1030. So you want to, anything else you want to get into or uh, should we? I'll, I'll wait till next week. You wait till next week? Okay, cool. Great. Yeah. Uh, anybody else got anything? Or are we good to go? Good. Good. All right. Hey, thanks everybody for watching. Thank you all for joining. Thank you that there were no major technical glitches that I had to apologize for in real time. Uh, we'll see you yet. next time. <laughs> yet. Yet. Yeah. All right. See you next time. Bye. Thanks everyone.